Hello, we're taking these two to their grandparents and our rendezvous point is about 40, 45, maybe 50 miles away. So it's around about an 80 or 90 or 100 mile round trip. I'm going to try and do it in one charge. So this is a perfect opportunity for a UK mild weather range test in our Ionic Electric. So let's go. Okay, so we're setting off with um, 146 miles indicated range on the center screen um, at 100%. And on the instrument cluster, it shows 147 miles at um, 100%, and it's about five degrees centigrade out, and it's um, not raining, not too windy. In the boot, we had not many items, just a few things, light things, and then we um, charged the car from about 95% to 100% just before setting off, because that warms up the battery and helps efficiency. And it was just me and uh, my children, so about one and a half people in the car. Now I wanted to show what kinds of roads and speeds were involved in this range test. So I've put together a few clips of the driving. The first one here, um, rather amusingly from Zero Tailpipe as the name of my channel, um, shows what happens when you have a tailpipe on an old bus and my children were not impressed by this at all. So we drove on a mix of um, you know, urban roads with 30 mile an hour speed limits, 40 mile an hour speed limits with some traffic here, um, getting onto the motorway near Manchester. This was in the north of England. And then, you know, keeping speed, trying to match speed with motorway traffic as fast as we could go. So that was between sort of, you know, 50, 60, 65, 70, depending on um, speed limits and so on. Here we can see the car using the smart cruise control and actually recognizing a motorbike, which the manual says, you know, it, it may or may not do that but it registered this motorbike and, and, you know, kind of safely matched speed with it, which was good to see along the way, you know, as well as doing the range test, we sort of had that little test. Um, here you can see we're sort of, you know, keeping up with the flow of the traffic. So we weren't sort of slowing down or hypermiling um, and staying in the inside lane necessarily, except, you know, to make turns. Um, so we changed from one motorway then to another motorway down the slip roads, um, you know, keeping up with whatever speeds uh, we could. This was a section of dual carriageway, so some 60 mile an hour speed limit here, some 50 mile an hour speed limit here. Where fuck? I'd like to go really fast, and we've got lots of traffic because it's the M6. Where fuck? So there's traffic. Yeah. Where fuck? I'd like to go really fast, yeah. And right towards the end of getting towards the rendezvous point, we did hit some, you know, bad traffic on the M6, one of the main sort of north-south trunk roads to the west of the UK. And, um, you know, we're crawling along here for quite a bit for the last kind of mile or so before we pulled off into the services, which you can see here, we're sort of pulling in and um, then just kind of, you know, looking for somewhere to meet up with my parents to hand over interesting signage here. So we have the national speed limit sign, the white with the black dash saying you can do 70 and then one saying 15 mile an hour right after it. So I don't know exactly what you're supposed to do there. Um, we saw some ecotricity charges just then. Um, normally I'd be parking in and lining up to charge at those. Okay, so we've arrived at Nutford Services at the kind of rendezvous point, and um, we've got 76% showing on the battery, 108 miles remaining range, and we've covered, according to the car, 45.9 miles at an average speed of 36 miles an hour, um, not great, taking one hour and 20 minutes. So normally I would be plugging in at the chargers which are behind us, um, but this time I think I'll just see if I can make it back. So it should be a 90 mile round trip and we'll see what battery we have left. The reason why it's so low arriving here is we've basically gone downhill. So the elevation here is lower than where we started off, um, as you can see here. And uh, let's see what we make it back with. And uh, we didn't use the heater very much, just opened the window occasionally to keep some fresh air in, but I do that for my, so my daughter doesn't feel sick. And uh, yeah, so let's do the handover and then start heading back. So one of the things I didn't think about when suggesting a motorway services as the meetup point with my parents is the fact that you can't just turn around and go back in the other direction. So there was actually, as you can see here, sort of sped up. Um, there was quite a long detour to go sort of back south and then towards going back up north. So it added about 14 miles to the trip. So it wasn't just the 45 miles there and back to the rendezvous point. It was this added kind of seven miles in each direction to get to the next turning off the motorway highway. Um, so that, that I hadn't calculated that and, um, you know, it, it made me a little bit anxious that uh, it was going to be longer than I thought it was going to be. Um, I'm pointing out here the fact that across from us in the fast lane is a Tesla Model S 100D, so the largest battery capacity pack that Tesla currently sell. And this person, this driver, probably doesn't have the concerns about, you know, will they make a kind of 100 or so mile round trip at all? 
Um, the range, I think, is closer to 300 miles on that. So again, just showing here um, that, you know, I'm sort of keeping up with the flow on the, the roads that we're on. It was a nice sunny day. There wasn't any wind, as I said, and the roads were dry. Um, here again, we're kind of matching um, speed, keeping up with things and uh, keeping up with the flow. Here we noticed uh, uh, pulling on in the white car is a Nissan Leaf taxi. So this is near Manchester and that's a Nissan Leaf taxi, which is uh, good to see, interesting to see. So here I'm pointing out that we've just passed the 50% point and we've covered an indicated 84 miles uh, traveled so far at an average speed of 40 miles an hour and have about 70 miles indicated range uh, remaining. So, you know, whether we'd get sort of that full range is, is, is difficult to know. It depends on driving conditions and so on. And now here we're down to 48% indicated state of charge on the battery and we've covered 87 miles. Now by comparison to the 24 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf that I used to drive, that would be it. It would be kind of like the battery gone and I wouldn't be home and you know I'd be probably on turtle mode or wondering if I was going to get there at all or looking for somewhere to charge, which they, they wouldn't be in this kind of area, not, not too close. Um, so the trip would be over. So this kind of trip I couldn't do in the older car and I would just be bricking it to kind of even consider doing this and I would have charged at the rendezvous point. Um, whereas as it was with this trip, I just basically, you know, um, saw my parents, um, let the children go with them and then was able to make my trip back without waiting. Although, I, you know, in, in the handover time, I probably could have charged a bit if I'd needed to, but, um, you know, I didn't need to. But, you know, major kind of uh, improvement over what we used to have in this electric car. And I think the Ionic actually makes, you know, the efficiency and the predictability of it, um, even though it's still a kind of guessometer um, indicated range, it makes things a bit more confident, the journeys you can make, I think. So we made it back, all okay, the little people are gone. Let's look at the numbers. 106 miles covered on the trip, uh, 34 miles average speed, and about it was three hours and 16 minutes journey time when we came in so a number of caveats here to that being covered in you know with 34 percent um, indicated state of charge remaining and 47 miles indicated range remaining 34 or 35 miles an hour average speed is quite low that's not sort of you know constant motorway cruising or high speed commuting or anything like that but this is a typical trip this is a trip i had to make and i wanted to see if i could make it in one charge and uh, I couldn't have made it in my Nissan Leaf 24 kilowatt hour electric car that we had before the Ionic Electric. That's no way. Not with those kind of high motorway speeds, keeping up with traffic, the colder weather. Um, I would have probably had to have the um, heater on as well. For some reason, the Ionic doesn't mist up as much as the Leaf used to. Um, in these kind of temperatures, around about the kind of 5 um, degrees Celsius kind of range, it used to mist up, mist up a lot. And I always used to have the AC with the heat combined running onto the windscreen to keep it clear. The Ionic Electric seems to have some sort of airflow that it keeps it clear. It's got the, the sensor um, that I've shown in the previous video, the 25 lesser known features. It's got that sort of auto demister sensor thing to keep it clear. That seems to work. So I was making do with two bars on the seat heater mainly and the steering wheel heater when it came on. Um, I'm not going to try and work it out in my head now. The range that you'd get from 100% if we continued with the driving uh, performance that we have today, the efficiency today, would be... But we have to remember that this is in dry weather, not windy. Um, started off at about 5 degrees Celsius. It's actually finished at 6 degrees Celsius. Now it went up to about 8 or 9. Um, low average speed, only me in the car for the return trip, and only me and, you know, sort of half a person, really, with my son and daughter in the car on the way out. Um, no major stop-start traffic periods, you know, no major traffic disruptions where the efficiency is going down. I coasted as much as I could, but a fairly typical trip. Um, I'll also try and see now as I switch the car off the kind of aggregate figures for the miles per kilowatt hour. Ah, okay, so 106 miles, 5.8 miles per kilowatt hour, and 48 miles indicated remaining. Okay, 5.8 miles per kilowatt hour there. That's good efficiency numbers and explains why, you know, we got comfortably 106 miles of a trip out of the car. So thanks for watching this uh, UK range test in fairly mild weather and sort of typical conditions on the Hyundai Ionic Electric. If you're new to the channel Zero Tailpipe, please do subscribe and check out some of the other videos that I've uploaded in the past. Thanks for watching, thanks for sticking with me, and bye for now.